is not easy to do. But for the Raptors 905, which to me, again, is uh, incredible that we have this level of basketball in our own backyards in Mississauga, where you're seeing guys who either are currently playing in the NBA or are going to play in the NBA, like Pascal Siakam, like Freddie. Uh, you've got that starting uh, Thursday night. So the West Westchester Knicks uh, is the start. And, and of course, a brand new dynamic duo calling the games. And we go to Ben Shulman. I think we're going to have on camera here shortly, Dwayne Notice, unless he's done something bad and he doesn't want people to see him. Uh, he'll be here shortly. Uh, ben, how you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm doing well, Mike. Thanks so much for having us on. I really appreciate it. Well, considering I worked with your dad all those years ago, it now it's starting to make me feel old where I'm talking to football players because I'd already talked to their dad, and now <laughs> they're, they're on. But it's great to see. And, Dwayne, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Appreciate the time. Uh, thank you for having me. Well, this is uh, an exciting time, uh, certainly for uh, any basketball fan here in Toronto because, you know, myself being probably the same age as your dad, uh, Ben, that uh, we grew up in a time where, you know, the thought of pro basketball being in the, well, we didn't call it the GTA back then, but being in Toronto was uh, a pipe dream. I mean, they tried many times, the Toronto Towers and Wilt Chamberlain would come up. And then there was a time where when the Buffalo Braves were actually in the NBA and they played at Maple Leaf Gardens. And that was kind of the closest we got. And college ball, you know, it was so strange because, there was this kid from St. Mike's, I believe, Leo Routens, is how you pronounce his name? And so he goes, I'm going, Syracuse? What, are you kidding me, Syracuse? He's going to play for Jim Beheim? Come on. And then, of course, since that time, not only are Canadians playing in all levels of basketball, but there are a good chance that the star of the team is going to be Canadian. And so for Dwayne, you playing uh, SEC basketball, playing down uh, for the Gamecocks, I mean, you played against and with most of the big names of that time. And as I said, there, there would have been a day where I, I wouldn't have seen Canadians doing that. And yet there you are uh, playing at the highest level and big time basketball. I mean, that had to be just, you know, really, I mean, not, and of course you worked for it, but that must have been an amazing feeling to have that kind of accomplishment. Yeah, it was a great accomplishment and it was pretty gratifying. Um, you mentioned Leo Rollins. I actually went to St. Mike's as well. So just seeing his story before mine, knowing how hard and difficult it was to even cross over to the States and get a D1 scholarship and play at a high level was so tough. And then, you know, now you see so many kids who are able to play D1 just because of the exposure of what you're talking about. You have the Raptors 9 5 over here. You have the CBL over there. You have Team Canada playing games with their windows. So just having that constant uh, display of high talent and it lets the kids know that they can do it as well. And they, they continue to work hard. They'll have an opportunity to play at the next level. So. Growing up, we didn't have many opportunities. We had to, you know, watch a Raptors game every now and then here and there. They didn't really televise a lot of college games. The, when I went to SEC in, in South Carolina, they used to make fun of me because they're like, how do you not know all these teams and all the conferences? I'm like, I'm from Toronto, man. It's a hockey and, and, and baseball situation going on down here. But it's great to see how the game has continued to grow. And um, it, it's really exciting. Well, and it has. And of course, Ben, your dad doing so much of uh, NCAA basketball. I mean, he's worked with a, a lot of the greats. So you have kind of, uh, I'm sure, grown up uh, seeing, uh, you know, uh, just uh, not only a level of of, of basketball and, and sport, but 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 broadcast. So you go to Syracuse. Uh, walk us down that a little bit. So people, I mean, again, uh, watching and uh, this later on today, I'm sure on on the Twitter account. But what was your road through I mean, your your broadcast early career going to Syracuse and now where you are now. What what, what was that road like for you, Ben? It was uh, it was really fun. It, it was uh, it was an interesting road for sure. Syracuse, uh, you know, I went there without really knowing anyone, but the intention was, you know, it, it's got a, a very uh, well spoken of broadcast school, you know, with guys like Bob Costas, Mike Tirico, Sean McDonough, stuff like that. So wanted to go there. And, and obviously, uh, like we were just talking about, you know, the U.S. collegiate sports is kind of a whole different animal. So didn't realize kind of what I was stepping into in Syracuse, where they couldn't care less about any sp pro sports team. And it's really the orange all year round and got a lot of great opportunities there to uh, call games for the team on the local NPR station, like, you know, national public radio, yep. like their CBC equivalent. Um, and got to do some TV for the ACC network and some other opportunities around there. And then uh, get to do some baseball in the summer, but going to Syracuse was great. It, it put me in a lot of 
great situations and let me work with other uh, like-minded people who are really passionate about broadcast. And uh, although I, you know, had the treasure of calling the first under 500 basketball season of Jim Beheim's <laughs> tenure, uh, I've forgiven them for that. There was a lot of winning before that. So, uh, yeah. you know, we probably, we could have used Dwayne. We should have, we shouldn't have let Dwayne get all the way to <laughs> South Carolina. We had O'Shea Brissett. We had some Canadian guys at Syracuse and we let him slip, but uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun being at Syracuse for sure. Well, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun listening to you guys. I think it's uh, you're gonna make a fabulous team. And uh, the one thing about the, the Raptors organization, they don't make many mistakes. I, I think even the ice cream guys are probably the best ice cream guys <laughs> going or selling a hot dog. I, I mean, Masai uh, Majuri, I, I think is 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 one of the most remarkable uh, human beings that we've ever had, not just in sport, in business in the city, but just as a human being. I don't know if you can do any better than Masai. He, he's a remarkable person, and it's reflected in the organization. So the fact that you both are going to be calling games for the 905, and um, you know, and look, there are challenges to this. Um, it's 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 a league, and we've talked over the years, and like Gemma Melalea and, and and Patrick, that you know, you have a roster that's constantly moving. There are moving parts dependent upon who gets hurt and who's moving. At one point, maybe you think you're going to maybe see uh, uh, Coloco or you, you think that maybe there's, but the lineup is a moving, breathing thing that changes on almost an hourly basis. So, uh, uh, Dwayne, I'll start with you. You having obviously played for 905, you've played in this environment where it is a little bit of a revolving door. So that's for, for Coach Corey. That, that's not an easy assignment. Like you've, you've got to be prepared that your lineup for a given night could change in a moment's notice. Yeah, like you talked about, I like the analogy of a revolving door because when I was playing for the 9 5, it was kind of similar where in a sense where, you know, you could have someone score 30 points and then the next game, uh, they're sending someone down from the parent team from the Raptors and that same player who had a great game for 9 5 might not even get off the bench, might get a DMP. So as a coach, you have to be able to manage different personalities and understand that the G League is just that. It's a, it's a place where guys are working to get an opportunity at the higher level, but where guys who are at the highest level are also having to stay in shape. They're coming back from injury. They need more reps. So as a player, it's definitely more mental than it is physical. When you're playing, you have to realize that, you know, you got to make the most of your opportunities, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's on the practice court, or whether it's in the film room, because you never know when your name's going to be called, whether it's going to be a 10-day call-up or whether it's going to be, you know, now you're a two-way. So it's always going to be some type of transition and change. You have to be ready for it. And and Ben, for you, you know, it's interesting, and and both of you reflect this. Just that uh, you know, the basketball IQ in this country has changed enormously over the last twenty years. It's something that, you know, there was a time where maybe guys wouldn't know some of the other schools in a conference. But I mean, it doesn't surprise me if someone knows about the Sun Belt or the WAC, or you know, they 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 just understand who you're going to play now. And for you. You also, because of your understanding and, and being both being Canadian, where you have Eric Corey, who has worked his way and and rightfully so from analytics with, with the Raptors all the way to this point. And so, but but he's new as a coach, but not new to the game or the organization. Uh, what do you think his challenges are with, with this particular roster? I know they just, I mean, again, moving roster, different players, but you probably as a broadcaster probably also want to have a little understanding with the coach in his headspace. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, we're just getting to to know Coach Corey like everyone else is as he comes into the new year. And I think, you know, from what we've heard from the front office, he's going to have a lot of challenges that, you know, they're used to having because there is like a lot of player turnover, a lot of coach turnover in the G League. And, you know, he's coming in as a first time head coach, so he still has to figure out, you know, his style and how he's going to manage that. But the good thing is in this situation, uh, he has said, you know, one of his biggest jobs is to administer the program that he was already working on with the Raptors. So now he's just taking control of the program he's already seen being run and using that to guide these guys. So it's not that it's not a challenge, but at least he has a blueprint in front of him. And now with all that roster turnover and with all the new guys, can he get them motivated? Because there are a lot of back-to-back -back days and, you know, a lot of you play like their first stretch, you play one night and then you wake up the next day and you play in the afternoon. And that's not easy to get your legs fresh and stuff like that. But uh, I was very encouraged by, he got his first win and some of these guys know him, but they're all pretty new and they all showered him with water after the game and <laughs> had a lot of fun with him. I think they probably like him a little bit, at least if they're willing to do stuff like that. So uh, winning over the team seems to be going well so far.
We're in conversation with Ben Shulman and Dwayne Notice. They are the play-by-play -play duo that we're going to have for the Raptors 905 uh, this year here on News Talk Saga 960. Uh, by the way, as they kick off the home opener, that's Westchester, the Knicks. That's uh, on Thursday. And then Friday, it's actually a double header on the radio station where they have the Steelheads against the Rangers. And then it'll be followed by the Raptors 905 again with the Westchester Knicks. So it's uh, it's uh, very busy on the radio station, very busy here in Mississauga. Now, look, I'm going to try to somewhat bribe you guys. I, I, I've done it with every single uh, broadcaster at every level that has ever come on this show. Uh, NBA, NFL, doesn't matter. No one uses my catchphrases. I, I always try to sneak in. I mean, could someone please? They 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 refuse. And 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 some of them, okay, maybe they're not that great. But if I could get a, you know, if someone hits a three, can you give me a what the what the hey? Or that was one of them. And it, no one's used it. Or or, or yabba dabba do. Come on, yabba dabba do has got to be used at some point. Ben, uh, Dwayne, nothing. I mean, come on. These are good phrases. I they're great ideas. No one listens to me. <laughs> that you're you're putting that on my plate, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm the uh I, I guess I'm Fred Flintstone if it goes down. I'll, uh, I'll think about it. I mean, at, at Syracuse, we would, to loosen, if someone was nervous, we would feed them like a <clears throat> phrase or two that was really weird just to make them laugh. So it's not, I've done it before, but uh, we'll see. I'll I'll surprise you if there's going to be a yabba dabba do. Yeah. Dwayne, what about you? Can you work something in for me? Uh, or do you have your own? Do you have an, your own? I might be able to work something in, but, you know, just also being a basketball player, I might use some current stuff that I, I hear when I'm in the court. So uh, you never know. Something might happen uh, during, you know, calling the games. I might speak in a little something, but I like your idea. It's, it's definitely good to break the ice with something funny. Yeah. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you for that. I uh, thank you for that. Well, look, guys, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Uh, you're going to do well, – it, it doesn't take a genius just listening to you guys this morning how good this is going to be. I mean, um, you know, as I said, the, the Raptors don't make mistakes, and and you're not here by by a fluke. Uh, you both earn the right to to have those microphones. Uh, you you know, and if to me, if you've been given the blessing by by Masai and the Raptors uh, organization and uh, Courtney and all, all the rest of the guys that make this such a special organization, I think it's uh, a real feather in your cap. But as I said, you you've earned it. Uh, and you're going to sound great. I mean, like, you can kind of hear it in, in, in my head already. And for Mississauga, and again, to have like the Raptors 905 and the level of basketball in their own backyard uh, really is incredible. It's very uh, family friendly in terms of, uh, of, of, the, of tickets. I mean, we know how expensive it is to, to see the Raptors. So if you want to see some of these players before they get down to Scotiabank, I would, uh, I'd suggest going to see this. So uh, once again, congratulations. Look, hey, we look forward to talking to you during the year uh, when we get the chance. And the schedule can be a little difficult sometimes. But whenever we get a chance, boy, I'd, I, I'd sure love to talk to you again. And, and I want to say congratulations to both of you because it's just a, it's going to be an awesome year with you guys. Thanks so much, Mike. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. That is Ben Shulman, Dwayne Notice. That is your play-by-play -play team for the Raptors 905 this year. And uh, for the Raptors 905, they could not have done a better job. And uh, just sort of nice uh, listening to these guys here this morning. You know how good this is going to be because this will be off the charts good. I think probably one of the best teams I'm sure that they're going to have in that entire league.